But dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and thank you for all the blessings that you've given us. Yes. And thank you for this time that you've given us to worship you and be with us as we go through the, tonight's service and give Brother Scott the things that you'd have him to preach. Yes. Put it in our hearts and our minds, the wisdom and the knowledge that's in your word. Forgive us of our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 tonight. We got through chapter 9. This is a couple of weeks back. So we're going to be starting in verse 1. Read down to verse 11. <clears throat> and when you find your places, if you'll stand with me in reverence to God's Word. Yeah. Starting in verse 1, he says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Amen. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us, for, uh, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Yeah. Lord, we thank you tonight for these in samples and examples, Lord, that we can look at and, Lord, that we can understand, Lord, by searching Your Scriptures, these things that You would have for us to know. Lord, that we would walk in Your paths. Lord, that we would walk in the paths of righteousness for Your name's sake. Lord, not uh, uh, walking in the, the vanity of our minds, but, Lord, to be sober-minded and, and uh, working and abounding in the work of the Lord. We just pray that you continue to help us as uh, the day draw ne draws near, Lord, to uh, Lord grow stronger in the faith and in, in your grace, Lord, that we would uh, be knitted together, uh, Lord, in love, and Lord, uh, a fervent charity amongst ourselves. Lord, Amen. we thank you for your love that you have for us, and Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. First thing I want us to, uh, I guess, recognize here uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 is who he's talking to. Uh, if you think about Corinth, uh, that's far from being a Jewish uh, town, you know. He's not talking to uh, Jerusalem. He's not talking to, uh, you know, Beth uh, <laughs> Bethany or any other place uh, in Israel. He's talking to Corinth, mm -hmm. a, a, a Greece, you know, a city of Greece. Uh, but he's talking to the church mm -hmm. made up of both Jew and Gentile believers in Christ. And this is what he says. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers... Mm -hmm. He's talking not just to Jewish believers here. Uh, and I'm talking about Jewish in the flesh. He's talking to both. Uh, Greek and Gentile, uh, I mean Greek and Jew, uh, he's talking to all the above, and he says, Our fathers, uh, how that all our fathers were under the cloud, 
and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat. For they drink, or and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, what a wonderful thing just to recognize here uh, that they were our fathers too, uh, because we are of the uh, seed of, of Jesus Christ, and we're all one in Him. And uh, so, as we go on here, just keep that in mind. Uh, he's talking about our ancestors in the faith. Uh, these were people that God uh, called out of Egypt, uh, which is a picture of God calling us out of the world. And uh, they were called out and unto Him. Right? They weren't just called out just to get away from Egypt. They were called out for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And that was to be sanctified unto the Lord and to worship Him and uh, to, to live for Him, to be His people and that He would be their God. And so that's the same for us. God has called us out of the world that we would be sanctified, set apart for His use. Uh, for His worship, uh, and, and, and that He uh, would be our God and we uh, would be His people. And so, uh, that's where I want to have our mindset tonight. But these people were all baptized, it says, unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Uh, you know, the, which it's a picture, right? Uh, that they were... Uh, one in the purpose of, of what they were setting out to do. And that's, that's the body of Christ, right? We are to be one mind, one accord together for the purpose of the furtherance of the gospel and, and the faith of the gospel. And so this is that, that purpose that they were sent out to was to receive the laws uh, through Moses. Uh, and, and to receive all the, the laws of the tabernacle and, and all the things that they were going to do to serve the Lord. And uh, that was kind of loud, wasn't it? Yeah, that was... But all the things that God gave to them were for the purpose of glorifying Him. And that is exactly what the church is for, is to glorify the Father, amen, yeah. through, through His Son, Jesus yeah. Christ. Acts chapter 7. <coughs> and here in the uh, message of Stephen, Acts chapter 7 and verse 37. says, Stephen here preaching, he says, This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear. He's talking about Christ. Mm -hmm. And this was Moses preaching uh, to the uh, children of Israel. Uh, the church in the wilderness, if you want to say. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the mount, in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us, yeah. to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again to into Egypt. It's not talking about they thrust Moses away from them. It's talking about they thrust Christ away from them and turned back to the idols of Egypt, saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. For as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. You know, Moses probably died up there on the mountain, so we might as well just serve the gods we can't. I mean, it's, it's silly, but you know, that's the way we are sometimes if we're not careful. We give up too easily. Uh, and, and our purpose for Christ. Uh, when we're set out for something so many times, 
uh, people use just the silliest excuses of why they don't remain faithful to the purpose that God's called them to. And so, and they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hand. Anything you put before Christ is idol worship. And they put their the gods of Egypt before Christ. And, and it was Christ because it says here that they were all baptized unto Moses and did eat. And what is baptism? It's the picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And all did eat the same spiritual meat. He's not talking there about uh, uh, the manna that which fell from heaven. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. they, they all partook of the faith in Christ that Moses preached unto them about this prophet who the Lord would raise for them uh, like unto him that would save them from their sins. And all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. That's right. Okay? Verse 42, Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. Now this is later on. But they began to worship the host of heaven. In other words, the stars, the planets. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what people do today. You know, uh, in in the the signs. You know, what's your sign? Uh, Scorpio, Taurus, all these different signs, and and what's your horoscope? And all the, I mean, that's it goes way back. It's wow. it's nothing new to our time. Uh, this is stuff that goes way back. That they worship the host of heaven and, and all the stars and things like that. It says, that is, as it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? <clears throat> so even after the wilderness, later years later, when they turned and started worshiping the host of heaven, okay, he, he said through his prophets, you know, that whole 40 years, did you have, did you offer sacrifice unto me? Did you do any of this stuff for me? You know? Because he was trying to get them to see that what they were doing was putting something, the sacrifice and the, uh, uh, the doing of the law before Christ Himself. In other words, exactly what people do today and say, oh yeah, you be must believe in Jesus Christ, but you also have to, to be that. baptized, or you also have to speak in tongues. Or you have to do this and that. And or you have to keep the commandments to be saved. And that's a lie. Okay? That's putting the laws and commandments of God before Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can't do that. You have to have Christ first. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Christ first. And then the commandments, keeping the commandments because you love Him. Jesus right. said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Well, our love for Him... <laughs> is not always what it should be. But it's something that we grow in our love for Him each day. So all these things they did in putting idols and worshiping idols instead of worshiping God. And he says, Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch. Okay, and Moloch was the God that they uh, sacrificed their children to. Uh, in burning their children in the, the valley of Hinnom, mm -hmm. which God uh, later <coughs> references the valley of Hinnom when talking about hell, mm -hmm. a place of torment, a place of fiery judgment. Uh, and, and, and that come, I mean, it comes from uh, the valley of Hinnom, which the Israelites uh, worship the God of Moloch and burnt their children in the fire. To the God of Mola. Uh, and so uh, it, it's. They went way far away from serving God, didn't they? And the star of your God, Remphan. Now, the, uh, the star of Remphan, I think, is interesting because, you know, they have something they call today a star of David. David never had a star. Yeah. Okay, you can't find a star of David anywhere in the Bible, anywhere. 
But you can find where they ha did have a, a star of their god Rimfan, which <laughs> was probably the star that they have now that they call the Star of David. Mm. Uh, and, and so, uh, even in that, it shows that they have gone away from what God intended them to follow. Mm. And that was Christ, the rock. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Figures which ye made to worship them. And I will, and they made these figures. And in other words, they're the ones that came up with the star of Rimpan. Well, how are we going to worship them? Well, let's make a star, right? You know? And he says, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. And so their whole hit the whole history there uh, that Stephen is preaching is to try to show them and show us today, as it says, these are examples and examples to us of how we can allow things in this life to get in between us and our purpose that Christ has for us. And that is considered uh, idol worship. But it was about Christ, and they knew it and turned from it. Okay, they knew it was about Christ, and yet they chose to do other things. Psalms chapter 105. Now, it might, it, not everything might have been clear to them on what was going on. But sometimes when you're in the middle of something, it's hard to figure out what God's doing, right? Mm -hmm. Until after you're through it and you look back on it and you think, well, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Look at this, look at that, look at that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so they might not have understood everything, but they understood enough to know that it was about the promise of Abraham. And the promise of Abraham was Christ. Okay? And that's where their hope was supposed to be, is in the promise that God made to Abraham, the seed that would come and uh, save his people. In Psalms chapter 105 and verse 39 through 42, it says, He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light in the night. The people asked, and he brought quails and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and the waters gushed out. They ran in the dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham his servant. That's what it was all about. His promise to Abraham, his servant. And that rock was a picture of... Uh, in other words, a shadow of Christ. In other words, showing what it, you remember what a, uh, Moses had to do, right? He had to take the staff and strike the rock, and the rock broke, right, in two, and waters came gushing up out of it. And you say, well, how is that a picture of Christ? Well, because Christ the rock was broken for us on the tree. And out of that came flowing rivers of water. In other words, the Spirit to revive us and quicken us and refresh us uh, in our relationship with God the Father. Yeah. And so this rock, everything you see, it's all about Christ. I mean, you cannot separate any of that from Christ. It's all about Christ. Yeah. That's why he says... And our fathers, your fathers, they're our fathers because of the faith of Christ. Man. That's how we are all brothers and yeah. sisters is in Christ. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3, and I've, you know, I've read this plenty times here, but yet it, to, it never gets old. Mm -mm. Because it's so amazingly clear and so many people don't even grasp it. Mm -hmm. A 
about the church is what I'm saying. That Christ is the rock, amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and those that are founded upon Him in faithfulness to His purpose are His house, the church. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 1 says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted wor uh, worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who hath builded the house hath more honor than the house. So, yeah. The house that Moses built, or well, the ho the house that Moses was faithful to was the house that Christ built. Mm -hmm. And what house is that? Well, it's, it's, it's his church. Mm -hmm. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ as a son over his own house. And you can find that many places in the scripture. <clears throat> Isaiah 66, Revelation chapter 12, talks about the woman uh, and she had a son. Well, that's him being a son over his own house mm -hmm. because the woman was his house, amen, mm -hmm. which is his bride, but yet he became a son of his own house, born through the faith and the promise of Abraham, which Abraham did what? He went out looking for a city in Hebrews yeah. chapter 11, mm -hmm. whose builder, which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Mm -hmm. Okay? So <laughs> Christ built the house, became a son, was born in the likeness of, of, of uh, man, <laughs> became a son <laughs> over his own house. <laughs> Amen. And Isaiah 66 talks about Who's heard such a thing that he was born before she ever had birthing pains? Right. In other words, the birthing pains that the church went through came after he was born. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is the persecution of the church after his ascension, which has gone on for, I mean, we're still going through it yeah. in many places in the world. And we're all looking for His return. Amen? Yeah. But Christ as a son over His own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Now some people would, who don't understand the Scriptures because they don't study them or because they believe man's teaching on the subject, would say this is talking about salvation. That it's saying here you can lose your salvation. But it's not talking about salvation. It's talking about the house. It's talking about the church. Yeah. What he's saying is you can be a part of the church if you hold fast your confidence mm -hmm. and rejoicing and hope firm unto the end. Mm -hmm. But guess what? If you don't, you're going to miss out just as the Israelites who murmured against Christ back in the uh, wilderness were consumed and never even got to see the promised land. Mm -hmm. Even those who went w wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years, right? Because God was not well pleased with them. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that they're not going to be in heaven someday? Some of them might not be. Some of them might be. Who knows? Because sometimes uh, people follow someone <laughs> in ignorance yeah. uh, and get judged for it, <laughs> right? And probably the people who were the ones leading the charge on the thing, maybe those were the ones that weren't saved. Who knows? But that's, isn't that the same way today? There's probably a lot of lost preachers and false teachers who are leading people who are truly saved in error and the wrong way, and they're going to miss out on the blessing of the house of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. And so that's the example that we're seeing here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. He's not talking about losing your salvation. He's talking about losing your, uh, uh, the blessings and promise of Christ's house, the house that Christ built, yeah. which is His church. Amen. And that's a big blessing. Yes, it is. Especially for us who live now in these end times. Amen. 
And I'm not going to read the whole uh, letters to uh, the churches in Revelation, but I'm going to read a, a couple of them. But one of them I'm not reading is the one to the Philadelphian church. And he says, I'm going to keep you from that hour of temptation mm -hmm. which is coming upon the whole world to try them. Man, that's a blessing. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's one of the blessings I want to have mm -hmm. because not everybody's going to miss that. And, and there's going to be a whole lot of people who are going to go through some things because, you know what, they missed out. Mm -hmm. And they might be faithful people where they're at, but where they're at might not be where they should be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because they're, they've been led astray by these false teachers and false doctrines. So he says, But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Well, God's not pleased with a lot of so-called churches today either mm -hmm. because they're not following Christ. They're putting the law and the commandments of God before Christ. And some of them are saved and some of them are lost. Who knows? That's between them and God. You know, I, I, I know some Church of Christ that I believe are saved because, you know, there's fruits of it. You know, they know their, the Scripture. I've you know, got some that you can tell that they love God and that they love His Word. But yet at the same time, they believe uh, things not according to the truth of the Gospel mm -hmm. in that you can lose your salvation and, you know, baptismal regeneration and all these things. So I say that to say this, there are a lot of people who are saved who are just not in the right place. Mm -hmm. And God is not well pleased with that. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 2 And then you have a lot of them that are deceived, thinking that they're saved because they're holding to the commandments or they think they're holding to the commandments. <laughs> no flesh can be justified by the law uh -uh. in the sight of God because no. we can't keep it perfectly 100% mm -hmm. of the time. But they think they are, right? Right. Yeah. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 7 says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Now the seven golden candlesticks he's talking about is the church. It tells us that in chapter 1. He says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. That's a good thing to have. There's a lot of churches like that. Yep. Church of Christ, they can't stand the evil. Even Catholics. You know, uh, you know, Catholics have some damnable heresies that they teach in their uh, churches, and yet there are a lot of things they stand for that I, I agree with. They're against abortion. They're against a lot of things that I praise the Lord they're against. Mm -hmm. Right? But they're not holding fast to the whole thing, right? right? The full counsel of God. And thou hast tried them, it says, which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. Well, praise the Lord for that. And hast borne and hast patience for my name's sake, hast labored and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Yeah. And who's that? Christ. What have they replaced Him with? It says that they have not fainted and they labor, they work hard. What is that talking about? Work. Right. They, it's like what He preached to the Galatians, right? He said, who hath bewitched you? Mm -hmm. He said, you, you started out right. You start, your faith is in Christ, right? You, were, you got saved, right? Yep. But now you're turning back to the law for your righteousness. That's exactly what he's talking about here. And you go read Ephesians, man, it's got so much about the church in it, it's it's crazy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And praise God for that. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> but they left their first love and that they've turned to the commandments and hating evil and focusing on that, you know, and, and that's what they now believe makes them righteous. That we hate evil and that we're keeping the commandments. That's not what makes us righteous. What makes us righteous is Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And Christ alone. Okay. So he says, Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. He's not saying they've lost their salvation. They say he's, they're fallen from grace. Mm -hmm. Which means, again, they're trusting in their works as their righteousness mm -hmm. and not in Christ alone. <coughs> or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Again, you have to understand the one of the most basic principles in the Word of God. There's a huge difference in the kingdom of God and the church of Christ. Mm -hmm. And he's not saying that they are going to be removed from the kingdom of God, but they will be removed from the church of Christ, the bride of Christ, which is what the golden candlestick stands for. And uh, as it tells us in verse 20 of chapter 1, the seven, uh, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Mm -hmm. So he's saying you're going to cease from being a church mm -hmm. because you have you start out and well. And Ephesus did start out well, amen, and believing and trusting solely in Christ as their salvation and righteousness and justification and sanctification and all that and now have turned to the commandments as being our righteousness. Well, we gotta we got to watch out for that, don't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. And that's the exact picture that we see at the children of Israel in Moses' time. What they did is they turned from their faith in Christ and made idols. Well, that's exactly what they're doing with the commandments of God when they turn from Christ and make the commandments something that is for righteousness. And, and sanctification and all those things that you missed it mm -hmm. Jesus said if you love me keep my commandments yeah. in other words it's, it's our love for him that's going to drive us to do his commandments mm -hmm. not our wanting to uh, you know be righteous because we are righteous it's the blood of Jesus Christ yeah. that cleanses us yeah. from all sin not the keeping of the commandments mm -hmm. And I know we know that, but I'm driving it home. Amen? <laughs> because I want us to know it firmly and, mm -hmm. and soundly. Amen? Yeah. Because there is so much deception in the world today. You have to be so careful in what you hear and the little things people try to twist and they'll make it sound like they're saying one thing when they're really saying another thing. Mm -hmm. And you really got to be careful of what they're saying, right? Yeah. And they'll use certain scriptures to try to, to make it really sound, you know, like they're speaking truth when they're twisting it and making it, sound, uh, making it not what the Bible clearly states. Okay, look down to verse 12. 12 through 17. <clears throat> It says unto the angel of the church in Pergamos, right? These things saith he which hath a sharp sword with two edges. Well, we know what that is, amen? <laughs> Hebrews 4.12 tells us that. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, amen? I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. He says, you got it rough. I understand that. And thou holdest fast my name. Even in the place where Satan's seed is, you are holding fast my name and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. 
But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. In other words, this health and wealth doctrine, right? <laughs> In other words, you're serving God for the blessings. You're serving God so you can be rich. You're going to give $100 and God's going to give you 1000 right? Mm -hmm. Because He says He'll give it pressed down, shaking together, and running over. You just give $100 and God's going to turn around and He's going to get you a brand new car. Right? That's the doctrine of Balaam. It's this health and wealth doctrine that we see rampant through churches today. Right? Name it and claim it. Oh, God, God says if, you, if two people agree on something that He's going to give it what they agree on, let's just agree on this and, and God's going to do it. Right? Because it's all consumed upon their own lust is what it's about. It's not serving God because of your affection for Him. Because of what He's already done for you. Right. It's serving God because of what He's going to do for you. Right. Not because of what He's done right. for you. And there's a big difference. Yep. It sounds so close though. They make it sound so good. But what it is, it's serving God on the basis of, oh, He's going to do this and He's going to do that. And I'm serving God because He saved my soul and I'm a working slow down sinner. Amen. Amen? Yep. There's a huge difference. And right. they had those that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block for the children of Israel. And that is to serve God according to their lust. Job, he said, I'll serve God if He slays me. Amen. That's the kind of service that God wants. Amen. God doesn't want us serving Him because we want a new car or we want a new house or we want a fancy job or uh, you know uh, whatever. God wants us serving Him because we realize that He has already done everything for us that we could ever ask for. Yeah. And it's a stumbling block, He says. And He says here, to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication and all the doing of these things is causing them to fall. And now that they have fallen into this bad doctrine, doctrines of devils, now they are eating sacrifice, uh, meat sacrificed to idols and committing fornication. And thinking it's all right. And man, look at what's happened in all these churches. Well, the pastor runs off with the pianist and, and all these things. That, and you don't think that that happens. It happens a lot more than what you think. Mm -hmm. Believe me, it does. There is so much. And look at the Catholic Church and all this terrible stuff that's happened there. What does it come from? It comes from just a little bit of, uh, of leaven. Leaven at the whole lump. When you get away from the doctrines of Christ and start twisting it and making it into something else that it's not, well then you've just started the snowball down the hill and by the time it gets to the bottom it's going to be a boulder. Right? So, hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate, repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, I'm going to fight against you. <laughs> Which is exactly what he did with the children of Israel back then. He sent the serpents to bite them, right? Because they murmured against Christ. He opened the ground and swallowed up a bunch of them. He burnt some of the fire. I mean, he fought against them. Why? Because they were not doing what he said to do. I mean, how in the Spirit of Christ to do it? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the new stone a new name written which no man knoweth saving he that receiveth it. And that's the last church we're going to read according to this but I want us to see he's not talking about losing salvation he's talking about losing your position in the bride yeah. of Christ and that's a huge deal. Yeah. Because you're moving yourself from the protection, right, of God that He's going to have for His church in that 
terrible, terrible time, and then opening yourself to whatever's going to happen. So Hebrews chapter 12, we're going to read these quickly because we all know them real well. Hebrews chapter 12, 25 says, See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. Well, he's talking about Christ. Mm -hmm. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, talking about Moses, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. Talking about Mount Sinai. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. What does that sound like? That sounds like immediately after the tribulation, amen? <laughs> There's going to be a huge earthquake. Yeah. And it's not just going to shake the earth, it's going to shake the heaven also. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of the things that are made. That those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Now you remember when he's talking about the foundation, right? that is built upon wood, hay, and stubble, right? Mm -hmm. That stuff's going to be burned up. Yeah. That the person who builds wood, hay, and stubble, it's all going to be taken away, mm -hmm. but he's going to be saved yet so as by fire. Yeah. Right? In other words, by the skin of his teeth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brother Damon likes to say, finer than frog hair, right? Because, <laughs> you know, you can't really see. <laughs> I mean, it's just going to be, that's all. I mean, that, that tells us what's going on here. Is that there's a lot of people that's building wood, hay, and stubble instead of gold and silver and the things that are of the pure Word of God. So those things are going to be shaken that those things that remain will be there. You know, that only those things that are remaining are there. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, now, the kingdom cannot be moved. Once you're saved, you are saved. But I'm going to tell you what, there's a lot of blessings and rewards that you can be taken away from mm -hmm. you when you're not faithful. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably. Now, we're not serving God so that we can have a kingdom. We're serving God because we've already received the kingdom. He says, wherefore we receiving a kingdom. We've already received it. Amen. We've already been made citizens of Christ's kingdom. Now, because of that, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Why? Because just because we're saved don't mean that we can't be judged. Mm -hmm. For our God is a consuming fire. Yes, we're saved, but now it's time to serve God because we're saved and because of what He's done for us and because He saved us from our sins. And remember that if we don't, there's, a, there's still a price to pay. It's not our salvation, but you know what? Our God is a consuming fire and He's going to melt everything that is not <laughs> eternal. Amen? That is not those things which cannot be uh, shaken. Amen. In chapter 10, verse 28 through 31. Again, he says, He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden under the foot the Son underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified in the holy thing. Same thing, exact same thing we're talking about, of those who have accepted Christ, and once they are saved, then they turn from that uh, foundation and start building wood, hay, and stubble their, for their righteousness and their holiness as it comes from the law or the commandments of God. That's exactly what he's talking about here. And what they're doing is counting the blood of the covenant wherewith they were sanctified an unholy thing. In other words, not able to make them holy. Not able to make them good enough. Right? Yeah. 
and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. And grace is a gift. If he said, if it's works, it's no more of grace. Because works is not grace. If it's grace, it's no more of works. Mm -hmm. That's what he says in Romans. Yep. And so they've done it despite the Spirit of grace. They've been saved by grace. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself. And they turned away from that to now live their life like they got their salvation by how good they were. Exact what he's talking about, what Moses did. Or the, not Moses, but the those who despised <coughs> Moses' law. Is they understood it was about Christ and turned from Christ to serve other other things. And later on, it <laughs> in Jesus' time, it wasn't the idols of the countries or people around them. They had taken the laws of God and made those their idols that they served and worshipped to the point that they had added to it so much of what you couldn't do on the Sabbath day that they wanted to kill Jesus because He healed somebody on the Sabbath mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. For we know Him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto Me. He's not talking about the lost. He's talking about His own people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's sad, yeah. isn't it? I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge His people. Why is God so angry with His people for doing this? Because they're supposed to be able to live. Because it's leading the lost people yeah. astray. Mm -hmm. Even if they're saved and they turn away from the grace that they have been given to now live as if it was the law or the works, that made them what they are. It's taking a lost person who hasn't been saved and making them now think they have to do that in order to be saved mm -hmm. instead of solely repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's why God hates it so much. Even from His own people. And He says, The Lord shall judge His people. Mm -hmm. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Mm -hmm. Man, it's a fearful thing mm -hmm. to fall in the hands of the living God. Man. That's why he says, study to show thyself approved unto God. These things are important that we make sure we're following the right way. Man. Amen. And thirdly, he says, neither be idolaters. And I wanted to put this in there because this is another thing that happens. Not only do people uh, turn from the grace that is in Christ or the spirit of grace to the commandments as their righteousness, but they also, there's those who are saved and instead of now using their time on earth to help others come to the kingdom of Christ, they just live for themselves now. Well, I've got my ticket to heaven. I can just live for my own pleasures, my own wants, right? My own wishes, uh, what I want to do. And that's what he says. Neither be ye idolaters as some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Mm -hmm. That's narcissism. Hmm. And narcissism is basically boiled down to just selfishness. Mm -hmm. They only think about themselves. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Christians have gotten to that church. A lot of Baptist churches, you know, Southern Baptists, they, used, they, used, they weren't what they are today, back in the day. They slowly just kind of moved away from where they were supposed to be. But even some independent Baptists, I mean, you can go down, and it don't, it don't matter what, what uh, denomination it is. There's lots of Christians who now that they're saved, they just fill a seat on a bench 
at church, and that's all they do. Yeah. Because the only thing they're thinking about is eating and drinking and rising up to play. That's all they think about, and they don't think about what God wants them to be doing, and that is being a witness. He said, look upon the fields, right? He said, it's, it's wide on this, to harvest. It's, it's ready. The laborers are few. Mm -hmm. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest, right? That He would send laborers into His field. Why pray that? Because that puts you in the right mindset, right? Mm -hmm. That what we need to be doing is being laborers in His harvest. Yeah. Luke chapter 12. And there's a lot of churches who have stopped doing that. And you know what? They're in jeopardy today because they're not getting the gospel out like they should. Mm -hmm. That they're in jeopardy of God taking their candlestick away. Luke chapter 12, verse 42 through 48. He says, And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? That's preaching the gospel. <laughs> Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. And if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink and to be drunken, in other words, selfish, right? The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at, a, at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And we know what that means. <laughs> He's going to have to go through some tough times. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. You say, well, what does that mean? Well, he's... it's judgment, right? The Bible says God will judge his people. Yeah. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. Mm -hmm. So that shows a severity there of the judgment and those who have been given more responsibility, such as pastors and teachers, you know, the elders of the church are going to be in more, held more in uh, that uh, judgment uh, for not doing so as those who are, you know, don't know as much. Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 through 5. He says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing in His kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, that's preaching the gospel, make full proof of thy ministry. Yeah. We can't 
change what other people are doing, amen, but we can make sure what we're doing is what God wants us to be doing. Yeah. And that's standing on the promises, amen, standing yeah. on the Word. And praise the Lord, standing on the King James Bible, preaching it, <laughs> reproving, rebuking, exhorting, and, and doing the work of an evangelist, watching in all things, studying to show ourselves approved unto God. Amen? Amen. And then chapter 3, verse 1, he says this, Know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Oh, we, that I would hope we would not be more lovers of pleasures more than doing the will of God yeah. in our life. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Yeah. From such, turn away. They are our examples and in samples <laughs> that we would not follow in that same example, but that we would work out our salvation, amen, mm -hmm. with fear and trembling to know that we are keeping His Word and that we're doing it for the right reasons. Not because we think it's what makes us righteous or holy, but we're doing it because He has made us holy. Yeah. When we weren't worth it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we weren't worthy. I mean, he he became our sin, our filthy sin, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Yeah. That's why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. If we're serving God, it's because should be because we love him for what he's done for us. Yeah. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you tonight for your word. We just pray that you'd continue to work in our hearts and lives. Continue to lead us and guide us and direct us, Lord, and help us to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Lord, not because we want or we think that it's going to make us holy or righteous, but Lord, because we are holy and righteous in Christ. Lord, help us to walk in the Spirit so that we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Lord, keep us in Your will so that we're not in Your way and that we're not a stumbling block to other people. Lord, forgive us where we fail You. Thank You for all You've done for us, Your love, Your mercy, and Your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our altar is open for those who want to pray as we sing. 66. At Calvary.
see all four verses of redeemed on the last I'll take up the offer. <coughs>
All right, kids, y'all going to come sing. And then Raina's going to sing for us. Thank you. 
232. <laughs> Tell me the story of Jesus.